Welcome to Here for the Gear. I'm Jeff, and I've had several viewers ask me to do reviews on speakers that were more focused around a budget. Now, don't think that because these speakers are not ultra-high priced, you won't be getting good performance from them, because that's not the case. I'm also going to be giving you a tip at the end of the video to keep your system protected, so make sure you stick around for that. So we're going to be focused on finding speakers that are really good quality at an affordable level. So I've capped every pair of speakers in this list to under $250 each. In fact, there are some on this list you can get for less than $250 per pair. I also have some speaker sets in this list that have matching center channels, surround speakers, and subwoofers in case you were wanting to set up a home theater system. In the description at the bottom, I have some really affordable 5.1 systems laid out with receivers in there as well. But let's get to the reviews. Pioneer has been making receivers and other audio and video equipment for more than 70 years. These are the SPFS52 floor standing speakers. I like their rounded cabinet shapes in the back. This was for acoustic reasons, no doubt. It also has dual ports in the back and an anchor towards the top in case you wanted to secure it for tipping, which is also a great idea if you have kids. I would have preferred them to be bi-ampable, like some of the others in this review, but we'll take what we get. They did sound good. They featured three five and a quarter inch woofers and a single one inch tweeter. They're rated at 130 watts and have a frequency range of 40 to 20,000 hertz. Because of their limited highs, these would be better for movies in my opinion, but for the price, they weren't bad speakers at all. If you want speakers with some of the more expensive features but don't want to spend a lot, these speakers have it. The Dayton Audio T652 features dual 6.5 inch woofers, but what I was really impressed with on this speaker was it used a ribbon diaphragm tweeter as opposed to a cone tweeter. This type of tweeter uses a lot less energy, has a lot more area to create sound with, and can create sound a lot faster than an actual cone tweeter. Similar to the Pioneers, these would be more of a movie-focused speaker because their frequency response range is from 45 to 20,000 hertz. These are rated at 90 continuous watts and 150 peak. I would have preferred banana-style plugs on the back versus the spring terminals, but I can overlook that. You could actually build a 5.1 surround speaker setup for less than $350 with this series of speakers with the matching center, surrounds, and a Dayton Audio subwoofer. I have links to those speakers in the descriptions at the bottom. An excellent bang for your buck, really, for this setup. Bic has been in the business of making speakers since 1973. The Venturi DV84s look like beasts with their four 8-inch woofers. However, two of them are passive, which means they are not powered. This is because the speakers are totally sealed. So think of it like this. When someone slams the front door on the house closed and the ajar back door opens because of air pressure trying to escape, a radiator allows that same flexibility within a sealed speaker, except nothing opens. The speaker also has a three quarter inch dome tweeter. Because of it having these eight inch woofers and three quarter inch tweeter, it actually has a decent frequency response range going pretty low, down to 27 hertz actually, and up to 22,000 hertz on the high end. It is rated up to 250 watts, which is pretty outstanding. They do, however, have a single set of terminals, so you can't buy amp these. However, they are compatible with banana style plugs, which I for sure would recommend. Really a nice set of speakers overall. I also have links to its matching center and back channels if you want to take a look at setting up a surround sound system with it. These are the Polk Audio Monitor 60s. These feature a 1 inch tweeter and 3 5 and a quarter inch powered drivers. They have a frequency response range from 38 to 25,000 hertz, but what puts them a step above the rest is that they're able to be bi-amped, so you can run the lower woofer on its own channel and then the upper two woofers along with the tweeter on their own channel. It is rated at up to 200 watts, so with these features, it's really good value in my opinion. Since they were three ways, it would have been nice if the woofer would have been slightly larger, but because they were such a good price, you could put the money towards an actual subwoofer if you really wanted to have some true bass. The Yamaha NSF210 speakers are a nice set of tower speakers to pair up with a receiver and a beautiful TV and a subwoofer. Now the reason I mention subwoofer is because they are very slim so they will blend in perfectly and disappear or hide. The woofers on these are dual 3 and 1 8 inch and the tweeter is a 7 8 inch dome. Now this does have some advantages. These speakers have an upwards frequency response of 45,000 hertz so they can go really high which is better for music enthusiasts. However, they can only go as low as 50 hertz, so you might not get all the lows you want with some of the others. This is why an actual subwoofer would be nice with this system. 
They're rated at up to 120 watts, which can still handle plenty of juice. I've included a link to the matching surrounds, center, and sub for this system as well. The Onkyo SKF 4800 Tower is a nice unit with a 1 inch tweeter and dual 6 and a quarter inch cone woofers. These speakers are rated at up to 130 watts and weigh in at over 27 pounds each. Onkyo, as you know, makes some great receivers, and these speakers are nothing to laugh at. They did fair with frequency range, getting up to 35,000. However, I would have expected a little bit lower bottom range than 55 hertz because of their cone size. But for their price, you could always add a subwoofer and give yourself a nice 2.1 setup. Also, unfortunately, they were only single pole speakers, so they didn't have the ability to be bi amped. But for what they were at their price point, they're really good speakers. At the top of the list, looking at Yamaha once again, these are some very classy looking, not to mention good sounding towers for a good value. The NS F 150s feature dual 6.5 inch cones and a 1 inch tweeter that are rated between 37 and 30,000 hertz. They have a maximum power output of 180 watts, so you'll be able to run them with a pretty hefty receiver. I would have preferred dual posts on the back, but these are just singles like most speakers in this price range are. The set also has a nice matching center channel and surround speakers, which feature three and a quarter inch woofers and a 10 inch subwoofer. You could actually get the whole speaker set up, including the sub, just for over $500. A really nice 5.1 speaker setup. As you can see from the speakers I mentioned, you don't have to spend an astronomical amount to get a good set of speakers, or even a full surround sound system. You can pair these up with a nice 5.1 or 7.1 receiver and some good media so your equipment will show what it's made of, and you're all set. One last thing I would really recommend for your home theater equipment is to use a good power conditioner. I would hate to invest all that money in speakers, a receiver, and a beautiful TV and get it all damaged by a power spike. Make sure you're using a good power conditioner of some kind and you'll save yourself in the long run by protecting your gear. I would rather waste a $40 or $50 surge protector than lose five or $600 or more of electronics. It is always crucial to make sure the equipment is protected. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Make sure you click like and subscribe to see all the videos in the future. Thanks for watching.